Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Happy Healthy Women podcast and HHW TV. My name is Natalie Colavillo, and I'm the founder and CEO of Happy Healthy Women and your host of this podcast. Very excited to be sharing my 20 plus years of entrepreneurship with you uh, and everything that we are working on in the Happy Healthy Women collective and community. So, yes, today we are talking about something that is kind of a sore subject. And we have someone to join us. I don't know why I'm saying we, because I have someone to join me. But you, you are listening. And so you are my we. Uh, we have the amazing Mike Wixon, who is many things to many people. Uh, but today, for me, he is the guy who runs the show at the pod plant. He is our podcast producer, and he's here to chat with me uh, all about today's topic, which is on rejection. Oh, Mike, how Whoa. you doing? How you <laughs> rejection. Oh, rejection. We are talking about rejection and I want to, so the title of this podcast is actually called the million dollar. No. And here's why rejection is so incredibly powerful and it is a tool that we can totally leverage if we do it right. And we're going to get into all of that. But Mike, first off, I want to hear from you because you've been a business owner for many, 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 1, many, thousand many, years. many, many years. A millennia. <laughs> and you get this whole thing. You are in showbiz. You are in show business. So you understand rejection. How does yeah. it feel to you? Are you desensitized to rejection? Uh, yes, I am. Not, no, I don't think anybody is. Uh, I think rejection is a very difficult one uh, for anybody in business, in the entertainment business, talent, uh, relationship. Rejection equals I failed or I'm not enough. Mm. And so I think it's hard to put that in perspective. But when you do in business, it, it can actually make a difference. A hundred percent. Yes, it can make a difference. It does make a difference and it will make a difference. For those of you who are watching, especially, I really hope you hear this today and you take this to heart um, and, and you use it as a tool to really help you and serve you in your business. So I'm going to share something with you. Mike, are you ready for this? Tell me. I get rejected all the time. No. I do. No. I do. Oh. <laughs> I do. I get no's all the time. How do you handle that? So I cry. No, I'm just kidding. Um, Me too. <laughs> I, you know, I will. I think there's something to be said about the five minute pity party. I think it's really important to have those, uh, especially as. I love that. What? <laughs> the five minute pity party? Yeah, I'm going to have, I'm going to feel very sad for just a very short time and then I'm going to move on. Next time you walk by my office, so for those of you who don't know, uh, the pod plant is in the same building as the Happy Healthy Women office. And, and so next time you walk by, Mike, I'm going to have a little sign on my glass door that says, five minute pity party. Come back in five minutes. Pity party. That's a, a really good uh, way to go about it. That sounds very happy and healthy to me, to be honest it's with you. It's very happy and healthy. And instead of margaritas in there, like what I'll be sipping on is maybe like a green juice. Oh, uh, you're so good to yourself. Sometimes, sometimes. Leave margaritas outside your door if you don't mind. Though, okay. <laughs> Pity party. Take one. Um, okay. So, yes. Where were we? We were talking about the positive aspects of rejection. So, yes. I was saying how I get rejected quite often, right? And and I'm at a point in my business, and I was, I was sharing with Mike earlier that, you know, I come from the acting world. I went to theater school. Um, I was... Uh, a working actress in Toronto for a short period of time. I met my husband and then I was like, eh, I don't need this anymore. Uh, kidding, kidding. It he, just he's a big time. star. He's, who's a big star? He's a big star? I think so. He's, I mean, he's, yeah, you can look him up. You can YouTube him. You he's can big find star. him. Star. Um, but, but, you know, so, so I like to think of myself as someone who had really thick skin going into business, right? I also grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. So I understand that rejection is all a part of it. But did I always consider rejection a good thing? No, right? Sometimes, well, 
for most of that time, I just thought it to mean like, like Mike said, right? Something about me. It means something about me. I'm internalizing this. I am horrible. I am not meant to be an entrepreneur, um, which is completely not the case. We can actually really use rejection as a golden nugget. So just remember that word, the million dollar no, and understand that there are ways to look at rejection and say, okay, I am learning things. I am solidifying my brand. I am tuning into the most solid version of my business that I can be. And this rejection is actually a really good thing. Mike, are you with me on this? I think it's how you learn everything about your clients and everything about your business, really, and your products. Because when they say no, it's it's really the beginning of a yes. I love in that In some so cases, right? Yes, it is really the beginning of a yes. It is. And and I mean, I would love for you to elaborate on that, why it's the beginning of a yes. Well, it's really how you find out, uh, okay, you, you say no? Why do you say no? Mm -hmm. Well, because price. You, let's role play it, shall we? Okay. Okay, you say no. No. Ah! <laughs> why? Why no, Natalie? Well... It's too expensive, and oh. I have a trip on my credit card to Acapulco booked. I understand. Is mm. it maybe timing with the payment on your credit card then? Um, no, because after that, I'm going to have another trip to the Bahamas booked. So uh, really, like this isn't a priority for me right now. Well, you know what? When it becomes a priority for you, you know exactly where to go. Meanwhile, have a fantastic time in Acapulco. Yes. Uh-huh. Right there. Okay. So I said the word priority. Most people would not when they are rejecting you, when they are saying no. Um, but I said the word priority because here's a really good point that this brings up. Rejection is really a, is, is a priority being stated, right? It's really someone saying, I'm not prioritizing that right now. I'm prioritizing this. And a lot of the times that has absolutely nothing to do mm -hmm. with your part in that. Am I right here? Yeah, I think you're right. Like if you're not ready to buy my product right now, or it's not the right product for you or the right service for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Thank, thank you for coming by. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Right. And that's it. And so, but we're not left with anything less after this conversation, right? We are just left with uh, a no, right? And I think I think sometimes what we do is we put so much weight on the no. We could have one thousand yeses, right? In in the over one thousand years that we've been in business, we could have a bajillion yeses and one no that sure. just gets under our skin. <laughs> Oh, why that? No. Right. And we will like lose sleep over it. We will talk to our husbands and wives about it. We will just not stop thinking about you it. You don't understand. The competition are basically the worst business ever. <laughs> I can't understand. They got the job. I think that's how I sound. I, I, I know. When you're, yeah, yeah, totally, totally. And, and, you know, God bless our spouses because they, they take it all in, right? And we love them for it. But here's the thing here's how we can not internalize this, not make it about us sucking, right? Not make it about us not measuring up um, and start to leverage it. So should we talk about that, Mike? I would like to talk about that. Okay. Pull me out of this hole. Pull you. <laughs> All right. I'm going to pull Mike out of this hole and we're going to talk a little bit about why rejection is such a key thing for, for being in business. I will start here. Rejection can tell you a lot about your brand, how solid your brand is, how clearly laid out your brand is. And that all comes down to, first of all, who's rejecting you? Why are they rejecting you? What are they rejecting you for, right? Mm -hmm. if, it's, if it's something to do with price, you even need to look a little bit deeper into that, right? Was it a priority? Is it that person who has five trips booked on their credit card complains about, you know, wanting to move their business forward and isn't doing that and rejects you <laughs> for wanting to help them move their business forward. Do you know what I'm saying? So we actually, we really that's, have to look at this. That's a really, really interesting positioning of a client. 
until that rejection includes something wrong with your product, your service, you, or your other clients, it's just not the time for them to buy or they're not even taking it seriously. Right. Right. So it could be a whole number of things. And, and to be honest with you, like, I, I think there's, there's a certain level that we have to go into as business owners or as people in sales. Like we don't have to dig super deep into that, but we should know um, the motivation behind their no, because then we can take that motivation and it can serve us in either changing something about our product or service that needs an edit, right? Mm. Um, that is there to serve someone in a better way. Or, and here's here's another very empowering piece of this, we can turn that into, this person is not the right client for me. This person is really just, this opportunity is not the right mm -hmm. opportunity for me and my business. And this, my friends, is where your solid brand comes in. Knowing your core values really, really well. Knowing who you are and what you stand in, your mission, your beliefs, what you are normalizing. I talk about that all the time in the Beautiful Business Program because all of those things are going to create this vibe around your business. And sometimes, a lot of the times, a no is going to come from a misaligned vibe. Yeah, that's that makes perfect sense to me. And by the way, if that vibe is brought into your business, it generally costs you money or doesn't make as much money. If the vibe isn't conducive, and sometimes it can be changed, obviously based on price or personality or whatever. But you're right. There has to be limitations to what you're willing to sell, where you're willing to go, and what your actual brand and product is. I think that's, that's important. You're not really being rejected at that point. You're being choosy about who you do business with and why. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And you know what's so cool, Mike, about this is that we don't even like we can we can put the choosy bit into our business right at the beginning. Right. This is and this is part of what we work on in the beautiful business program, if I may just share, because we really we really at the beginning of our businesses or at the beginning of the program solidify what it means to have a very strong brand, what it means to know your ideal client to a T. And that is where we get to choose, be choosy, put the choosy into the biz. And once that choosy is in the biz, that is doing the work for us. And so how I like to call, what I like to call this is the invisible brand filter that sort of sits at the forefront of our business. Are you aware of this, Mike, or did I just coin this term? No, I really like that. I, I'm, I'm going to tell people that I came up with that, actually. <laughs> Thank you. My pleasure. So the invisible brand filter sits in front of your business. And what this is from behind, right, where you're standing, this is a mm -hmm. very, very solid representation, knowing of all that you stand for, of who you are, of the vibe in your business, the way you communicate. XOXO in your email, right? Love, uh, you know, just the, the good vibes that come along with your business and with you as the forefront of that business. And on the other side is everyone, right? Is every single client that could possibly be yours. And with a good brand, with a solid brand, you don't need every single client. You yes. Get to attract the perfect clients for you, the right ones for you, and everybody else who's not really aligned with this beautiful invisible brand filter looks elsewhere. And this is what we want as business owners. You may not think you want this because you might think, I want every single person in the world to be my client. You don't. Trust me when I say, <laughs> No, you do not. You don't. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, uh, this is really solid advice because I think it is positioning in your mind. You just, by the way, when you think through what you just described to us, Natalie, about this invisible uh, filter, that invisible filter is your brand protector, but also it elevates your brand value because if you stick to your core brand, that brand then actually has a value of its own that you can build on top of. If you're going to be wishy-washy based on what your clients are looking for, I'm not sure your brand really benefits from that. 
Totally. Right. And, and the more clear you are in that brand, as you said, the more valuable it becomes, the, the more successful you are, the easier it is to scale. The more you, as the leader, really intentionally put this brand in place, the more successful your company becomes. Now, I will say that there is a starting point for this. And a lot of the times, well, all of the time, especially for women in business, this starting place, this starting point is our intuition. Yes, it's what we've learned. Mm. It's what we've absorbed. It's all those things that are coming at us. But our intuition plays a huge role in this. And if we want this to be the compass that guides us toward the right opportunities, the right people, the right clients, the right collaborations, this brand filter is everything right? And, and our intuition really has to play a role in this. This is, uh, this is really solid uh, advice because it is one of the hardest things in business to recognize that uh, you, you, not every client, not every job, not every contract is perfect for your business. It's very difficult, in fact, to get your mind around that. But I, I think you're right. When you put yourself in a position that, well, this is not the right time, not the right client, not you're, you're further ahead in understanding that your brand has value. Mm -hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I go have a pity party for what five minutes. We get five minutes for that. <laughs> five minute, five minute pity party, okay. little, little cold brew or you know, sometimes you can get that juice. out of your system in like three and a half, but you got to jog. You have to really, yeah. you know, Put some effort into it uh, physically. Yeah. And you know what? Just take the full five. Go on YouTube. Like, whatever. Just do something with it. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, you know, here's here are the, the, the key points that I really want to reiterate here. Rejection can mean um, maybe something about you, but most of the time it is just a priority being stated, right? Um, and also, here's how we leverage it. We first of all, build our resilience, right? Build our business stamina and really get to know um, ourselves and, and become thicker skinned. Um, and it also allows us to hone our offerings to make sure that we know um, what it is that our clients want. And third, it leads us in the right direction. Those are the key points that I wanted to make sure that we had on this episode today. Rejection is leading you down the right path. Yes. Awesome perspective. Natalie, thank you for not rejecting me as a guest on your show today. Oh my gosh. Opposite of rejection. You are, you're coming back so many times. Yeah. <laughs> I want to thank everyone so much for tuning in to this episode. If you liked what you heard or saw today, please hit subscribe. Join us again for another incredible episode of the Happy Healthy Women podcast. I love you all so much and I'll see you very soon. Mm -hmm.